global organizations the gat general agreement on tariff and trade a recap of the term free trade foreign trade without any restrictions either on imports or exports is called free trade due to various reasons countries create hurdles in free flow of goods and services across the nations these could be by way of levying tariffs import duty or by way of quantitative restrictions before we move ahead let us understand the term balance of payments in greater detail the difference between a nation's total payment to foreign countries including movements of capital and gold investments tourist spending etc and its total receipts from foreign countries it is a statistical statement that summarizes for a specific period transactions between residents of a country and rest of the world balance of payments position indicate various signals to businesses there are many signals that the balance of payment account of a country gives out the policies of a nation are highly affected and determined by the position and status of its balance of payments while formulating or deciding any economic policy balance of payments position and policy effect on balance of payments is given special consideration while all policies affect balance of payments policies like tariff policy those related to foreign flows etc affected in greater magnitude many countries in the world especially underdeveloped countries were facing the problem of deficit in their balance of payment accounts because none of the developed countries allowed free imports from developing countries tariff and non-tariff barriers to trade reduce the volume of world trade the origins of gat can be found in the economic disaster of the interwar period a quick look at a few of them with a single major objective of creating a global environment of free trade GATT General Agreement on Tariff and Trade a global organization was set up in 1948 in all 118 countries in the world were members of the GATT and India was one of the founder members of it The most important trade liberalization activity in the post World War II period has been through GATT. It has given the world a basic set of rules under which trade negotiations take place and a mechanism for monitoring the implementation of these rules. Efforts were made to persuade developed nations to cut down their tariff rates on imports from developing nations. However, the role of the GATT has been in the capacity of an advisory body. No legal powers were vested in the GATT to enforce the resolutions passed by the general body of the GATT. critical analysis of working of gat let us take a quick look at the working of gat over a span of 6 decades over its 6 year history the gat has had many shortcomings agricultural trade has largely eluded liberalization 
the current spread of preferential trade arrangements in the form of bilateral and regional so-called free trade agreements have reintroduced discriminatory trade practices. The GATT has also gone through many difficult phases. The world economy went through a particularly dangerous period in the late 1970s and early 1980s when sluggish growth and painful structural adjustments led many countries to ignore the GATT rules altogether. Despite these shortcomings and difficulties, the GATT framework has survived as a durable code of conduct for commercial policy and dispute resolution. Tariffs have been ratcheted down. The penchant for voluntary trade restrictions has been put to rest and potential trade wars have been peacefully diffused. The relevance of the GATT is reflected in the WTO's ever-growing membership. The GATT made efforts to persuade the developed nations to cut down their tariff rates on imports from developing nations. In all, eight rounds of trade negotiations were held at different locations around the world. In spite of all this endeavor, GATT failed to bring about changes in the barriers to free trade.